everyone, I'm back with episode three for the altered paper clip. Um, we're making this one in this episode in this series. Um, so I thought let's go through the supplies. I need some charms. Um, you want to pick some. You want to keep your charms kind of small because you don't want too much weight on your you know your paper clip um, so keep them a little bit small like this one I picked out from you know my charm stash and it was it's a little bit too big um, but this one is a good size this little bird these butterflies works um, these are a little bit, like that would work, but this one I think is a bit too big, um, a little bit too big. So keep in mind this, the size when you pick out your charms. And what I did, I just started covering them with gesso, and I, I learned a few things when I was doing that. Um, but anyway, I'll show you that in a minute. So you want your charms, you want some chain. Um, this is just a simple copper color chain, link chain. You will want some gesso. Let me get that. And you will want some jump rings. Uh, I have some copper ones here that I'm going to use. There's three different sizes. You will want some jewelry tools. These are the ones I used. The bent nose, the chain nose or straight ones, and the wire. These are the wire clippers. You'll want you don't have to have this, but I used these patina paints. Um, one is aged bronze and the other one's antique copper. And I mixed them together to get the color I wanted. And I think that's it. Oh, and the, sa the pin that you use to attach the charms, this particular one looks like this close it came from um, Tim Holtz I don't know if he still carries them I I could have checked but I didn't um, but if you don't have Tim if you don't have this kind you can use a regular safety pin um, about this size and it, it will I'm sure it would look fine you know, just rough it up with some gesso and maybe a little of this paint and it should look, it should fit in perfectly. So, that's that. So I thought I'd start by showing you how I um, gessoed some of these. I picked out some charms. I'm going to use this key. So, <coughs> Get the gesso open. Ah, my hand. Um, at first, I just I went over it with a, a brush, but it was it was just getting too much gesso on it. So I found a really cool way to make it look good is to rub it in with your fingers and. I really liked the look that achieved when I did that because with some of these I ended up having to sand off some of the gesso because it was just a bit too much. So I still wanted a little bit of metal to show through but I wanted to take the shine off a little a lot of the metal you know the, that stark look of you know just a plain metal clip. So that's how I achieved that. And with this one, 
it looks like I touched it up a little bit with some patina paint. Um, you just keep rubbing it in till you get, you know, to the point where you you like what you have. You think you've achieved that look that you want. And you set it aside. I let them dry overnight. Um, in this case, I probably won't. But um, I still think it needs a little bit more. A little bit more on there. But I, like I said, I found the, that the, um, using the finger really worked well. Especially with this clock. This little clock I, ugh, I got some on there. I rubbed it in and it, it just really made it look cool. And with this heart, I put on too much and I tried to sand it off and then I got shiny metal showing through. So today I'm going to try to um, um, cover up that some of that shininess. See what we can come up with. And with this one, I just kept painting it on with my finger and rubbing it in to get that um, to get that look go. Oh, this one I use quite a lot of gesso as I'm looking at the one I made. So you want it, you have to um, put the gesso on in layers. Let the first layer dry, then put on some more. So with this one, we can paint it on. Just keep working the gesso in. I didn't pre-sand them or anything and it still, it still came out fine for me. But if you find that it's not sticking, then you might want to lightly sand the surface of the charm so it will stick better. Other people say, you know, um, use alcohol to clean it off from surface dirt and oils. So that's her first layer. And then we'll come back and look at it. So this one and the key, we'll move on to the um, the paints so I can show you how I, oh, no, let's do the chain. I wanted to give the chain a little bit of a, a shabbier look, so I just took some just so on my finger and rubbed it onto the chain. And you can get a chain like this in the jewelry department of any craft store. I don't know if you'll be able to find the copper one. And believe it or not, I think I picked this up in Walmart. The reason why I go there is because all the other craft stores are quite far away. They're not far, but I mean it's a good drive. It's a it's a half hour drive to get to a craft store. So if I need something and I need it quick, I will go to Walmart because they do have some stuff in their jewelry department, and they do have a small craft depart, you know, craft department. They have glues and, you know, gesso. They have some art supplies, but not anything, um, you know, a large selection. And they have the more inexpensive brands. But um, that's why I do go to Walmart, because that's the only place you know, f close to me, where I can get something in the craft, you know, category. 
um, close by. So let me clean up my fingers here. So we did the chain and um, I put my, sorry for reaching, but I put them back. Take another one out. Get some of that gesso off my hands. These patina paints are great because they stick so well to the metal. There's a ball in them. You want to shake them up pretty well. I shook them up before I started the video, so they're pretty well mixed well. And then to achieve the color I wanted, I mixed the, the aged bronze and the antique copper because the copper, antique copper was a bit too bright. So I just put a drop or two, that's all I need, in a little plastic <laughs> packaging. And put another, about a drop of the bronze, or two, or three. <laughs> And for this, I use a real tiny paintbrush, one like this. And I just mix it up, kind of dab it around to see, make sure I got the, the color I want. And that looks pretty good. So let's take this key, and then I just put, oops, that's a bit too much. Just kind of dabbed it on. And then if it's too much, I'll go over it again with some gesso. Kind of rub it in so it's not too, too shiny. But it has a little bit of an age look to it. Just take some more. Just go and dab it in because this paint dries really fast. They say um, if you want, you can heat set it with a heat gun. So let's try this, see if we can fix up this heart here. A little bit of paint. I use my fingers a lot. But that's okay. It's all a part of the process. Kind of rub it in. See what we can come up with. See, it's still shiny. I might have to sand this. Well, if I sand it, it'll... Um, let's try painting over it. Letting that dry and then going over it again with some gesso. And then I think we can fix that. Make it look pretty cool. So that's the heart. This one may have to add a little bit more gesso. Get the edges and parts that are going to show inside there, but also make sure you don't gesso your clip closed, which I did on the safety pin, and that's another one I want to touch up with the um, other paint. Looks good. Dab some more. I got a piece of Looks like um, cheesecloth on my paintbrush. <laughs> Here we go. Let's get that off. There we go. I think I got it. All right. So let's go back to the paint. Get my pin. I'm gonna put it on a. Just touch it up with some of this paint because again 
This was one of those that I covered a little bit too much with the gesso. And then it was also not the color I wanted. It didn't have that coppery look, which I thought went well with the pink colors here. So I just took a little bit of this and painted it on. And I'm using my, and I let it dry and then I put some gesso on it. All right, let's see. All right, so we'll set that to dry because we're not going to use that today. We are going to use the chain and the key. So I think I got the key to a point where I like it. It kind of looks about the same. A little bit in there, a bit too shiny. A little bit more, just like that. That's pretty good. And let's do the heart. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use that today. I might use the clock. But it might be too big, that's what I'm not sure. I'll have to see when we look at it. Well, that's much better. Yeah. Just impels my finger on it. This is what I call playing and experimenting. I might not be doing everything properly and in the right way but it's working for me. So, here you go. Now let's take their pin and get that touched up a little. Oh yeah, exactly what I want. Turn it over, even though the other side doesn't really show. We'll do it anyways. That's pretty good. So let me clean up my hands and we'll move on to doing the jewelry part. I let that just so off my hands again. I will set these aside. I also wanted to say that this one, um, which one is it? This metal one with the clip. This charm right here, the feather, is one that I made uh, using shrink plastic. I was experimenting with that too, and that's like a whole nother video, but I made a bunch. I tried some, I basically stamped on the shrink plastic, and I made sure I made a hole and then um, this one I colored in a little bit with a metallic marker. Um, this one I didn't do anything at all. It's just a little leaf. And I put a hole right there. You gotta make sure you make your holes before you do the shrink plastic. They don't always come out totally even. Um, like this butterfly is a little wonky, but it was fun to try it out. And I came out with a few good ones. And that feather, the feathers came out really well. Here's one, another one, and here's another feather. That one came out real well. So. I just wanted to show you those. And, all right, I think I'm, I'm good here. So let's move this, and bring this over so we can use it as a guide. And uh, the first thing we're gonna do is to uh, 
put the safety pin on. Yes, put the safety pin on. And this one, to make it hang right, you have to thread it through this way. Um, and unfortunately, I did not leave enough space so I'm going to have to put it on upside down, like this, which is a bummer, but I think it'll still look okay. But that's another thing I would suggest you do is, um, see, we learn as we go along, because <laughs> I forgot how I did that one. Somehow I got it on the other way. Let's try this way. And I see, I don't think that lump, that little um, coil at the end is going to go through. So what we could do is um, just put it on upside down. Thread it through the loop. So in order to do, to get this on the right way, is, um, so it's hanging with this part down is to put it on the loop before you glue the loop on, which is, I think, what I did with that. I did. I put it on, and then I glued the loop on. So just for um, demonstration purposes, I'm just going to close this pin. and hang it upside down for today. What I'll probably do is end up taking it off and fixing it. So, there we have the, so remember that, if you want it hanging down this way, you want to put it on the loop, this fabric loop, before you glue it down. All right, so the next step was kind of get a, feel for where the jump rings go and how much chain I want to use to get it to hang right. So what I did was I put on one more piece of chain, a long piece. I kind of gauged it on the card like that. And then I took into consideration I was going to add a medium sized jump ring. So I cut it off. Let's cut it off to about right there. And then you just snip the chain off. Like that. And make sure that piece that you snip comes out it's out yeah. and then hang it back up make sure you're that looks good because when we put the jump ring on it's gonna fall and then on this little one I only used a few links of chain so we will cut that off later let's put this one on first all right, so let's open the jump ring. And trust me, this is no jewelry course here because I am not a jewelry maker, but I know enough just to work with it. So I open my jump ring like that. I put my chain on first. Loop it through and then loop it through the end of that pin. I want to make sure it's open enough to go through the end of that pin. And then we close it. I got that close all the way. All 
looks good. So there's that long piece. And then I took another medium jump ring. Same size as the one before. And opened it. And I think this is where we decide whether we're going to use the heart or the... I think I'm going to use the heart. I think the clock is too big, which means that what I'm going to have to do is add... I think it'll work. I think I'm going to have to add another jump ring. Let's just see if it'll hang right. It, it might not hang right with just one. Oops. See, I'm not the greatest at that. There we go. This is kind of heavy for it, but I think it'll be okay. Plus it's hanging a little bit too low for me. See how long that is? So, it does hang right. So let's move it up a couple of links. And this process is exactly what I went through when I was making these. So, let's open it some more. Quite a thick veil on that. All right, let's move our jump ring up. Put our heart on first, and let's move it up about three links. So. This is so hard to do on camera. About three links. See how that works. Yeah, that's much better. See how that falls just towards the end of the card? I might have wanted that side, but I can always turn it around later. And I could have put that on again. Then I take a little jump ring, a little tiny one. Choose. And it looks like I went down about um, one, two, three links. So let's find our opening. Open it up. Should have done this first. Put our chain on. And then go three links down. And loop that through your chain. Sorry. All thumbs here. One to go through. Oh, there we go. 
this through. Yep. Close it up. Another way you could probably do this is to put together these jewelry pieces first and then attach them to the paper clip. So there we've got our second piece of chain. And like I said before, I only used a little bit. So we're going to cut it off at about... Maybe three or four links down. Take away that little piece. And this is where we attach a large jump ring, our key, and then this little charm which I made. And you can look up on several videos on how to do, how to make these little charms. I think, I believe Artie Mays has one and Tracy Fox has one. I'm sure there's several jewelry YouTubers out there that have them. So, um, I would suggest you, if you want to know more, to go look it up on YouTube and do a search. Okay. So now we attach our key, and we pick the part, the pick the side of the key we want to show. That part, the jump ring through there, and then put the, the little bead dangle on, and then. Attach it to the end of your chain. I wish I could show this. Oh, there we go. It's right through. My hand is getting sore. Um, and then close your ring. Make sure they meet up. And there you go, you have your little paper clip dangle, yay! And for that little piece of chain that's left there, that, you know, because we moved it up, I'm just going to keep it there because I think it looks good. And actually the pin looks fine upside down, <laughs> but um... Yeah, just remember that when you want to put that pin on, to put it on this loop here before you glue the loop on. Because there won't be enough space once you glue it on to flip that pin around so it's facing this way. And that's the one I made before. And let me show you... One more little thing to show you is on this one. Put that clip. Um, what I did was I looped a piece of fabric. I'm get a little piece here. I don't know if I have a piece to work with. Um, but I looped the fabric around the back hole, as you can see here. See how that's looped around? And then um, I attached it to the card after I looped, looped that around. And also, for this piece, see how that hangs like that? And I didn't want this flopping over all the time. So what I did was I, I took some jewelry glue and glued the chain down 
in between that little space on the clip so it would stay there permanently. For this little tag, all I did was I cut a piece of card and made a tag shape. I pounced some gesso on the card. Then I inked it a little with tea dye, you know, to color the gesso. And then I edged it a little with the, um, that, um, opal wax, which I put away. I don't know if I have it here. I edged it a little with this stuff, opal magic. I cut a little word and, um, inked it and cut it with these decal-edged scissors to make that that edge around the paper. And um, then it just clips right in. It's actually removable. So you actually have a moving part. And for the chain, I just took some, you know, uh, made some little dangles with one bead and made loops on each end so I could uh, attach another dangle with a jump ring and then another dangle with a jump ring. So that's how I did that. This one is a little bicone bead and again I put a loop at each end of the bead attached it to this chain with a jump ring and then attached it to the feather with another jump ring. For these, this one, this one I used the old, actually it's an old um, gold pin that I happened to come across in my dad's stuff and I saved it. Um, I used a different kind of chain here. It's uh, like oval links. I attached the um, paper or the <laughs> that safety pin, the safety pin, and then I added different lengths of chain and added a charm at each one. This is actually a little metal tag. I forgot where I got these tags. And then I took a little rose. This is a resin rose from Tim Holtz. And I attached it with some jewelry glue. If you don't have jewelry glue, you can use E6000 or um, glossy accents will work, should work too. This butterfly is just gessoed and touched up a little with, with some of these patina paints. Um, and this little charm here is a Tim Holtz charm. They actually come etched with words and numbers. But I, <laughs> when I did these, I just sewed over them and thought I could sand it. But when I did that, it came out really shiny. So I said, okay, then I'll just um, cover it over with a... a a word on a piece of paper, which is how I did that. And I touched it, again, I touched it up because I covered it so much with gesso. I wanted to give it a little bit more of a metal look, so I touched it up with them, some of that patina paint and put a word on each side. So that's how that one is made. If you have any questions about these, uh, Come, please leave me a, a comment and I'll get back to you and answer your questions. I hope you enjoyed the series. I hope I was able to explain things and show things um, clearly. And thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. I appreciate it all. See y'all later. Bye.